Uh, I'm an introvert, but I like to emote, uh, emote in person. So uh, thanks for bearing with me. And okay, let me share my screen. Uh, I hope you're all seeing the, the, the title, right? All my iconic stretches, good. Okay, uh, so I, yeah, I'm Ellie, I'm Ellie Barra. You can contact me here, I would love to hear from you. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to try to join uh, Clojure and spreadsheets in a fun way today. Uh, and let's dive in. Uh, let me put this in presentation mode. And, okay. Uh, and let's be frank, home iconic, it's a fancy word, uh, it, but it just means uh, same representation. That uh, That's literally what it means. Uh, and it's, it's annoying because it seems that it's a very a specific word, very clear. It sounds very technical, medical. Uh, but it turns out it's a very contentious word. <laughs> People have been arguing for the, about this for decades. Uh, uh, imagine, like, and there's two extremes. We can either make the term too, so vague that it applies to all languages and we sink it to triviality, or we can go to the other extreme and become too finicky, too pedant, <laughs> uh, and, and say that it doesn't apply to any language, you know? So we're going to have to navigate these waters. We're going to have to find a way and... Uh, you might as well ask, why bother? Why? <laughs> and uh, the reason why, I think, is explained in this essay by, by, by Paul Graham, uh, Roots of Lisp. And it's basically that the unusual thing about Lisp, its defining quality, is that it can be written in itself. So it's almost as if we took Lisp and if we distill it, and it, we came out with a word, like, but Lispy is too vague. So we came out with homo iconic, and now it's our task to, to understand what it is, OK? Uh, and there's this epiphany that you're supposed to have, that code is data, data is code. It's, it's a galaxy brain thing. Uh, it, it's all right. I, I, I would just like to add that uh, a couple of things. I, I think this makes it clear. Code is evaluated data. Data is coded code. Because what I've often seen is that people go from this to, to like long rants. So maybe just append the slogan a little bit. So think about it this way. And my, my, my other contribution is gonna, I'm gonna play with the Azure drawing uh, with these labels. Uh, uh, which are going to be, you, you're going to see them throughout the talk. Uh, okay. And, but thankfully, that's going to be, that's it for me about the term itself. Thankfully, uh, Alessandra Sierra has already gone into the weeds for us. And she, uh, this is a map of her talk. It's, it's wonderful. I highly recommend it. It was in Closure Conch 2017, Homo Iconicity. It is what it is. And she went straight into the, into the weeds, into the historical forums of programmers discussing about this for decades. And she came out with two wonderful things. A test, like if, if your language is, if your language passes this test, it's home iconic. And a working definition. Okay. So uh, and this is gonna be an adventure because we're gonna see the concept through the lens of the spreadsheets. Uh, and the our other tool besides the test, it's gonna be conceptual play, which is something mathematicians do all the time. We have uh, a concept and we try to extend it. Point, line, square cube, what comes after, you know? And, and we came up with the hypercube and we spent a lot of time trying to visualize it. Uh, but it, it's kind of what, I'm, what I wanna do. And here's another take, uh, point, line, certain, triangle, what comes after? So maybe the triangle pyramid, right? But what about the, the cone? Uh, what about the, the square pyramid? So just, just keep in mind, uh, this is how we're gonna avoid pedantry, you know? But just, just let's play around with concepts and see Maybe there are different paths. This is kind of like music. Maybe there's uh, several notes that, that can play well. Uh, and yeah, that's how I hope to avoid these twin streams and land us from the land of Lisp to the land of spreadsheets. So I hope you can join me. Uh, and this is spirit. And uh, the frame of the talk is also, and, and, and the seed of the talk was this great essay uh, from Gordon Brander, who's uh, very well known in circles of thought, tools for thought for very, thought-provoking essays uh, and very well-written, very historical. And he keeps this scale of, of power for interfaces, for, for, for languages. In his thinking, they're, they're the same thing. Uh, here they are. Uh, so it's four levels. It started at the bottom with uh, level one, which is discrete verbs and nouns. So you just point and click and stuff happens, you know? And just to put... Uh, I love this, I love this level. Getting computers to, to get to this level was a big thing. It turned them into appliances and a lot of people can use them and you can use them on your phone thanks to this level because we didn't used to have this. But this is user land. And if you wanna go higher, so the first level is composable. And uh, maybe this is clear. So in, in the first level, you can just 
you have to compose your actions in time. And in the next level, you can you can have a notation and then you can compose and the computer executes this code. In the next level, which is the level of functions, you can say, oh, I'm doing this a lot, a lot. Uh, why don't I make my own function, my average, you know? And, and this will do the same thing. And uh, the, the fourth level is, is Lisp, uh, self-authoring uh, and DNA and stuff, like crazy stuff like that, that, that Gordon goes into these, I highly recommend it's the same. Uh, okay, so uh, spreadsheets took us from level one to level two. Uh, without spreadsheets, uh, spreadsheets are the main way, the mainstream way that users compose uh, their actions and that the main way they are programmers, you know? And just to put this into context, it's a famous quote uh, that, that I love and it's very well known in Lisp circles. It's from Dijkstra that says that Lisp has assisted a number of our most gifted fellow humans in thinking previously impossible thoughts. That's love the phrase, right? Previously impossible thoughts. And I agree. So it took many of us to self-authoring the, the, the fourth level, but I just want to, to put this in the wider context and, and play with this and say that spreadsheets have assisted billions. <laughs> it is literally the billions. Uh, as I've seen estimates of from one to two billions of active users uh, on the planet use spreadsheets intensely and they're thinking previously impossible thoughts. So that's why it, it's fun to care about this, okay? Besides just being fun for the fun of it, for the abstraction of it and the conceptual play. Okay, so something, this year happened, which is we spreadsheets took a leap from level two to level three. Uh, what happened? Uh, Lambdas happened. Uh, this is very recent. In September, uh, in Google Sheets, we, we got uh, Lambdas, a map and name functions. And in Excel, we got this in February. So th the two biggest players uh, took this uh, next step to level three. And I'm going to be talking about this a little bit, but uh, I'm also, of course, going to be talking about how could we take this to level four? So this was the seed of the talk, thinking about uh, Brander's scale and just wondering how could we get to the next level if we are already here? And uh, that's gonna be the plan of the talk. I'm gonna, this, this so far has been preamble. Uh, I'm gonna dwell a little bit of, on the essence of spreadsheets, what's unique about them, what's their unique constraint and what makes them special. Uh, a quick tour of the dashboard uh, I've been building for three years uh, for, for the hospital, San Jude. Uh, then we're gonna have fun with functions. Uh, this, Again, just came out three months ago in Google Sheets, which is the, 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 the main uh, spreadsheet uh, tool that I use. And finally, we're going to try to put quote enable in spreadsheets. Okay. And this is just going to be a proof of concept, but I hope it, it tickles your brain. Okay. Uh, so what is a spreadsheet? It's a, it's a grid of data and a grid of code. It's a, it's a good way to think about it. So they're overlapping, you know, and they're interlinked. Uh, Overlapping how? Well, you usually see only one layer at a time, except on the current cell, that maybe you toggle it and you see the, the other layer, right? The formula. But you can also flip this. And sometimes you can see the, 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 all the formulas. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's a useful flip. And interleak how? This is very specific. It's called the value rule. And I had so much fun learning about this, but this comes from Alan Kay's famous article, Computer Software. This is from 1984. Spreadsheets have just been invented for five years. Greatest computer theorist uh, started playing with this and thinking about it, and he he compared them to to uh, he compared spreadsheets to 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 tissue because he said they are the first multicellular software. You know, isn't that beautiful? Like, uh, because he, he said that uh, like it's, it's almost like if every cell was a computer or every cell was an object, but they are all connected. You know, how they're connected is the is the magic, of course. Uh, so. The value rule is very simple. It just says that every other cell is readable. It can be, it can serve as input as, as, as to a cell, but that cell can only write to itself. Okay, so that, so it, it it answers where does the values come from in in a spreadsheet. Uh, so, for instance, if I change here a cell, it just it just changes this. But you may say, but maybe another cell references it, right? And that's okay. They all propagate. But uh, what doesn't happen is that you can have one cell. And then that cell edits something else. And then that there's no time. Only when user, when there's a user change, there's time. Okay. Uh, but there's space. And what I mean by that is that it's not like, like, like total in the logo. So wherever you're placed in, in the spreadsheet, you can say, uh, give me, multiply that value one cell to the left or add up all those cells above, you know? And oh, by the way, uh, and this is a, a play for uh, Infinite Canvas, uh, which is all the rage now. 
uh, spreadsheets were the original infinite canvas, but again, they're spatial in a way that most infinite canvas these days are not, okay? So maybe to, to understand more uh, what they are, let's contrast them with something they're not. So uh, let's contrast them with cellular automata where there's data, a data layer to a grid, a grid. Uh, but the code is the same for all cells. And we think of time rather as, as each execution is a step of time. So here we have the famous glider and we take uh, one step, one step, one step, and then it repeats itself, right? So, so time happens, this is, this is a movie, okay? And uh, control flow programming, uh, there is no space. Instead of space, we have abstract data stru structures, which are very powerful, very flexible, but we have to realize that this is one of the reasons people have a struggle with programming uh, because space is really useful to ground yourself. Uh, and in normal programming, in control flow programming, uh, execution order is time. And uh, this is just fairly complicated because even if, well, the simplest uh, execution order is just sequence, right? We have one line of code, then the next, the next, the next, the next, and so, so on. But uh, of course we have all sorts of uh, variations that, that, I mean, they're incredibly powerful and great but they can be hard for people to, to get their hands, wrap their hands around, around them. So yeah, this is a comparison. Spreadsheets uh, have no time, but they have uh, space. Uh, cellular automata have both time and space and control flow programming has very complicated time and has no space or maybe has infinite spaces if you wanna think about it that way. Uh, okay, uh, grids are OG. That's another key point of my talk. Uh, they are deep tech. Uh, so the story goes like this. Uh, Turing was exploring meta mathematics and he came up with computers. Von Neumann, uh, a bit later, uh, was wondering about cell replication because he was interested in cells and he was like, well, how do they do this? So he invents automata theory, but it's basically too complex, even for him. So his friend Ulam proposes that he use idealized space to make uh, the complexity more tractable. And boom, grids are created in, computer, in computer science, you know, uh, and, and cell automata are created. A few years later, McCarthy is studying metaprogramming in Ben's Lisp. And 20 years afterwards, uh, we have uh, dynamic spreadsheets to study automatic recalculation. Uh, just notice how computation is intrinsically linked to, to these loops, right? To, to self-reference. Uh, I just find that lovely. Uh, okay. Uh, one final thing. Uh, this came out four years ago uh, in, in, in Excel. It's been longer in, in Google Sheets which is that we have, uh, not, not many people know this, but we have a literal representation of the grid as text in a formula. So if we have this grid, we can convert it into text this way. So this is like, it, it looks annoyingly like JSON. <laughs> I always get confused or with ADN, ADN. It almost also looks like CSV sometimes. So we have only three elements, the range delimit, the, the limiters, commas, and semicolons. And this matters because uh, it turns out well, I haven't even read to you the um, Alessandra Sierra's definition, but in a homo iconic language, she says, code is written with literal representations of its principal data structures. It's just a way to say uh, that it's a very native way to, to work with, with, with code. So uh, this is gonna come handy. Uh, and just to talk a little bit about the, the, the constraints is that with this literal syntax, you can only create tables. So you cannot have this thing because this is not at, this is empty here, okay? So, so this, this is not a valid rectangle. Uh, you can also not uh, not have this because this, then they're not touching each other. So it's not contiguous, okay? And uh, you can also, oh, but the troublesome thing, the reason this took a while to get started is that this bends the value rule that I told you about, you know? So this is what should happen, but with this, which is called array spilling, by the way. So array, so one cell can spill into the other ones. Uh, we have uh, a bending of the value room. So Excel, one of the most scale softwares on the planet, on the planet, like mainstream users uh, for for end user programming, had to add a complete rewrite from an engine. But it was it, it was thought to be worth it, and I think it is. So let's go live for this part uh, because I think it's, it's the best way to explain this. Uh, let's see if this works. Okay, array spilling. So to give you a feel for this, uh, equals uh, the braces one and two. That gives us columns, right? Uh, if I put uh, three and four, so it's like almost like a carriage return, okay? And I get uh, my, my grid and it's controlled from here. And 
so only this controls all the other ones. It, it breaks the model of spreadsheets a little bit. So if I want to change this to five, it breaks, you know? <laughs> so th there's the, th it has to be empty to, to have a space to spill over. Uh, let, let's have another one. Let, let, let's make this one just, uh, just text that I, I, I put, A, B, C, D. We can also do stuff like that. We can also reference whole ranges, you know? And now we have, we have it in two places. And if I go to the source, I can change it and it changes in both places, but I cannot change it in, in, in the copy, like crucially again, but it gives us some reference, okay? Uh, okay, let me uncover this and let me show you a really fun thing that you can do with this already. This, this, this already exists. This is nothing that, I, that I'm adding or prototyping. This already exists in, in both uh, Sheets and Excel. Uh, so this is the way you, you have a spark chart, this, uh, bar chart, sorry, in, in, in Google Sheets. And so here you pass the parameters. And the first time I came out across this, I was like, oh, this, this looks like JSON, but it's not JSON. Like, I, I just want to type a, a column here, but it, it, it will be an error. So why? Why are we doing it this way? It was very confusing to me. So it turns out there's a very good reason, because that is, is, is a grid hidden. But we can... We can have an actual grid, you know? <laughs> That's the fun thing about it. So we can select this and call this options. And now, instead of having this clunky code here, I can just put it options and it just works, you know? <laughs> and I can have this, just copy paste this everywhere. Uh, for some reason, maybe this one, it's the classic. Okay, yeah. Uh, now this is right. And if I, I can do live changing, so orange. And they all change, you know. So, and uh, I find this very, very neat. Uh, I hope you do too. I think this is already there's a loop going on here, right? So, text is being converted to a grid and then back again. There's something fun going on here, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, what can you do with spreadsheets these days? And this was very fun to to me to notice. So, back in that article that I told you about uh, from Alan Kay back in 1984, he proposes things that you could do to extend spreadsheets, you know. He says that you could have bar charts, uh, which are dynamic, and every cell is part of the of, of the chart. And I didn't know about this, but I started working uh, from, from 2020 with St. Jude uh, Children's Research Hospital. It's a famous hospital in the US, and uh, we uh, coordinate with uh, over 100 uh, hospitals in Mexico uh, to improve the, the treatment of children with cancer. And uh, we've been uh, working on this for three years. It's a dashboard. Uh, it has hundreds of, of users, very high level users, uh, hospital administrators. It has uh, their readers, they consume the, the data that we provide them. Uh, but of course, the, the, it's an aggregation of, of a lot, a lot of data about children with cancer. Uh, and here it is. Uh, an example, this is just a, the, the, the main launch pad for the dashboard. Okay. Uh, so now it's time to have fun with the new functions and spreadsheets. So, this just came out, uh, as I told you, two months ago. Uh, what I'm going to do is, is, is show you first uh, two functions uh, to work with, to think a little bit differently from, from how we usually think, think about it. Uh, then we're going to see an implementation of the game of vibe, just really quick, but done in a different way, and then some time tracker experience. OK? So uh, this is going to be live again. Let's close this one, and let's go here. OK. so. This, these are two functions that I made. These are, I made them uh, for, for, for us. And uh, if I'm here, I'm currently standing here. If, if I want to go up, I just move in the y-axis and I move uh, with the minus one to get the one above. So that will be up. You know? And to get the one below, I hit one. Uh, to get the one to the right, I hit I, x. So it should be super straightforward, right? Uh, oh, by the way, I, I have uh, the formula view toggle. So you, you see, so I go from, from, from values to formula. So right here, I have just uh, uh, numbers from one to five. And over here, I double them uh, by referencing them and just doubling them. And this, this looks kind of ugly to, to people. Uh, it, it's a way of having, uh, so the way you would create this is copy and then paste, right? Or extend this guy over here. And it looks different, right? But and like every every instance of this uh, looks different, but it's really just uh, the same thing. Look at it this way. Uh, so this should give us the same result. It yeah, it's the same result. 
But notice that the formula itself is invariant. And this turns out to be, this is the actual way that spreadsheets work. Uh, it's called R, R1C1 mode in Excel. Uh, Google Sheets doesn't have this, but uh, you can you can now create it with, because we can now have our own custom functions. And it's a, it's a better way to think about it for, for our purposes. Uh, and for instance, here, here's some stuff that you can do. Suppose that we want to do a habit tracker and we want to count streaks. So one way to do this would be to uh, say, okay, if the one above, the checkbox is true, then go to the one to the left, add one, and otherwise return nothing, okay? And if we put this in all of them, we get a streak. And the nice thing about this kind of programming is that if I break the streak, like it, it responds to me, you know? <laughs> uh, but uh, let's try, instead of having this one, let's, let's, let's do the same thing we did here. Let's say, if the one above is true, then give me the one to the right at one and otherwise do nothing, okay? And we put this everywhere and it should work just as before. It, it does work, good. Okay, so we can do it. Now, let's just to, to show you how this is done, we create a new function. It's gonna call date count, it's gonna be called, and we put this code here. Next, create, and we are done. And now, uh, equals day count. We put this everywhere. And no, well, notice again the, the beauty of this. It's almost starting to look cellular automata like, right? Uh, and it, can, it works just as before. But now I just have a single place to to put this 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 logic, and yeah, it works really well. I think. Uh, okay, uh, now <laughs> let's play the same x and y we used to. Now let's play with cellular automata. And again, uh, we're gonna implement Conway's game of life. Uh, we have a self where we are, like our current self. We're gonna look at this neighborhood uh, with this. We're gonna use now both at the same time. And I created already, this function is just hood sum. It gives us the sum of the neighborhood, okay? So if I, if I change this, it, it changes and, and gives me a new, a new, it updates automatically. And the rules of this game of life are extremely simple. I just call them step. This is the step. And uh, I already preloaded this. So what this guys do, and if you can, you can read it. So this is step, a step before. So this one references that one. This one, that one, this one, that one, and so on. And I can now, and when I put a one, it, it, it gets bolded in. This, this is actually a one, you see, I'm putting a one, and it gets highlighted in black. Okay, so I'm putting one more, one more. This, are, this, this is actually running live, but nothing interesting seems to happen until I finish it with this. And it, it worked, it moved. But it's, this is like a comic. Remember that I told you that in, in spreadsheets, there is no time other than my changes to the spreadsheet. So this is what's happening. Uh, and that's why uh, I started from here and the glider moved, you know? And uh, yeah, uh, here's a, a, a bigger playground. So maybe let's put uh, a lot of lines. How many we have? Okay, let's add one, well, one more, uh, just to show you the patterns. And yeah, that one, <laughs> yeah, this is the game of life. This is something that has been done, of course. Uh, this is very popular among programmers. For instance, I, I found uh, this implementation of the game of life in, in Google Sheets. But notice that, well, he didn't call this, this here. It's done with apps. And how is this different from what I showed you? Well, uh, look, like he, he, here's his implementation. There's time here. So he, this is not a very spreadsheet-like thing to do. Uh, so he's treating cells almost like uh, it's pixels in a bitmap. So, I mean, it's really fun, it's cool. I, I admire what he did, uh, but notice his code. Uh, so he has to create the whole, create a whole universe. Uh, so he's not working like in the spirit of spreadsheets. And that's why I feel this is different, you know, and fun. And again, very, very new. This just came out two months ago. Uh, okay, and uh, back here. Uh, so now just in the interest of time, I'm gonna skip over some things that I've been playing already with these functions. So I took the tracker thing uh, and created a very, very fancy new kind of tracker. Like I'm obsessed with time, with time interfaces. And this is what I came up with. Uh, I also created a new kind of calendar that uh, tracks how many days since and until. It looks like this. Again, it's done with the checkboxes. And finally, this is my favorite one. This is a timesheet uh, where I keep track of my hours. And what I found beautiful about this is that 
it's, it's almost like that scene in the matrix uh, where you see code and the code lives there for a reason. Like it needs to be there to be meaningful. So I found like this is almost like the matrix thing. Okay. <laughs> so that's it for, 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 for all of the, the preamble. And we've come to the moment of truth. Uh, the moment you've been waiting for which is how to have quote and Eva in spreadsheets, okay? And again, we're gonna use the test by Alessandro Sierra. Uh, we're gonna walk through it. Uh, this is closure, this is the simplest closure you can have, uh, we, but we're gonna have, walk through it because it's, it's important to you to, to see how she distilled the concept. Okay, so the first thing we do is say that with def A, and what, what it says is say, look, A, let have it be this uh, Cody data, you know? And then we just run it. And as you would expect, B equals five, because that's what this quoted data was. Yeah. That's B five, 15, sorry. Uh, so after we run it, uh, so B now equals 15. Okay. Next step is that we manipulate. So but what, basically what we're doing is we are knocking with but last, we're knocking the 15, and then we are conked up, we're joining it with 37. Now we have this. And here's a way to explain, describe it in a sentence. We are manipulating A's data as any other data. And that's, that's the key to how I can see. That's where, where you get the magic. Uh, and now we run it again. And now B equals 37. OK? <laughs> OK, so now we're going to take this and we're going to put it in uh, spreadsheets. And I built out this uh, worksheet for, for us. It, it's, it's very similar to, it's just, just a spreadsheet. Uh, it's just, uh, whenever I put some data, it, it gets uh, foregrounded with white. And uh, whenever I create a, a reference or a formula, it, it gets put in yellow. So that we can see what's going on and we can see where's, where there's code and where there's just data. And over here, if I use a thing called formula check, which is a formula itself, and I, I, I put it here, like here, it's just for us to, to see what's behind, you know, to pick to the, the other layer. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. Oh, and there's another thing that you need to do, to, you need to know. So let's say we have a bunch of names, Alice, Bob, Charlie, Eunice. And now we are gonna have that same thing. We're gonna put it here, but now we're gonna use a function. I, I created, this is a custom function, x sub, x way sub, substitute. And it's gonna replace uh, I, I create a system of coordinates. So this is going to be Bob. I'm going to not Bob off and I'm going to replace it with Bianca. And let's see if this works. It works. Uh, by the way, I, let me just see what, so that you can see what's going on. Oh, right. This is the wrong reference. Mm, yeah. So that's what I did. I, I, I took out, I took this uh, range. I knocked off Bob. Oh, wait, it's not working. Oh, right. It's, I got the, my coordinates wrong. So Bob is the one that should have changed. Uh, Bob is now Bianca. Yeah, that, that's great. So Bob changed to Bianca through the use of this uh, formula. Uh, I hope you're with me so far. <laughs> so now it's time for the good stuff. Uh, so it's gonna be called code and it's gonna be B was 15. And then I'm gonna say A equals that one above. Okay. Oh, wait, that's, uh, sorry, minus one. Okay. And let's put the formula text to work. And I'm going to call this range, I'm going to call it code. Okay. And uh, now let's just like, just repeat code. Okay. Working so far. Uh, let's see what we're doing here. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. And uh, now let's quote that code. So let's quote it. Quote is a function I created. It's, an, it's a new custom function. <laughs> so when I do this, notice what happens. Uh, so it gets like frozen in time, you know? <laughs> this is what, what, what the formula was. So that's what happens when I quote. Uh, I can undo it, you know? So now uh, eval that code. And yeah, it just runs again. <laughs> uh, this is just a proof of concept again, but okay. So now we're, let's, let's try to do what we did before, which is let's, let's try to modify this with our X, Y, sub and see what happens. Okay, so let's take this, well, let, let's look at this, X, Y, sub 
and a sub uh, quote, oh, sorry, code. And my coordinate is going to be, uh, we said that it's 2, 1, right? We're going to knock this 15. That's be 2, 1. And I'm going to change it to 37. Okay. And yeah, this I, I, I did knock it off. Uh, and oh, yeah, th yeah, this is, this is working fine. But uh, I, I forgot to code. Okay. So I'm, I'm working on the coding. So just, just to, for us to compare it, uh, I'm gonna put it over here. What happens with, without coding, okay? So without coding, we have this, which is that, uh, so the value was previously evaluated. So these are not the same, in, they're no longer the same, you know? But over here, I did change the original code. Like I did not the 37, but it still has to be evaluated, right? And that's the next step. And so that will be eval of that. And it did, it now changes. And <laughs> so, yeah, I think this is the equivalent of homo iconicity, like a, a, a pretty concrete example. Uh, it, it's, it's I, I think I'm mirroring uh, what she's doing about like the, this code. Uh, and you might just, just, just say like, uh, Again, just keep in mind that this is the the play. Like, what 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 do we do with this? And there was a, a famous research from 2020 from Microsoft Research, in where they proposed uh, that users usually do copy paste uh, of, for instance, this is a mortgage calculator that they have, and but they have to change the logic every time. They're not together, so they proposed something they call gridlets, which is like a live copy paste, where you would be able to have a source, several instances like this, and then they would be connected, you know? And uh, this is almost there, almost. Like the one thing I would like to change is for instance, uh, somehow like I would like to put 50 here and ha then have this one also change to 50, but changed here, you know? So <laughs> the logic would, would come from here, but I could, be, I could be able to overwrite, but this breaks right now. And there was no way I could simulate it to you because this, this, this bends the, the core rule of spreadsheets, like not even with apps, but I tried very hard, but I hope you can imagine it. Uh, so yeah, and th this could be a next step uh, for spreadsheets. As I told you, we went from level three to level four. And yeah, to wrap up, like this is my core message to you, that while the spreadsheets are old, well, so is Lisp. And, but the spreadsheets were never finished. They kept evolving. And Clojure is not 1960s Lisp. And, uh, but spreadsheets made a new look, I think, with all the change that they, that's been happening. And I think they will get more and more lispy as time goes on. Uh, so thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for research funding to, to Rome Research, uh, Connor White Sullivan to St. Jude Hospital, uh, Naomi uh, to Clay uh, Nicole for sponsor, sponsoring this. Uh, and yeah, you can uh, please contact me with, with, with uh, any comments you have. And I'd love to hear your questions or what you think about this. So yeah, thank you.